Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Apologies if I've been a little bit quiet this week. I haven't been feeling all that well. Indeed, the room is still spinning. So if you would all mind just sitting down for the next couple of minutes, uh, that would help me out enormously. But the show must go on. So I'm back today with one of my favorite little subcategories, the Spec Monster Micro Brand. Now I've been trying to work out where you get the best bang for your buck over the last couple of years at this value end of the watch market that is the mainstay of the channel here. Is it Seiko? Do you get your best bang from Seiko's divers or the bottom rungs of the Swatch Group ladder? Or do you indeed get the best value from money from micro brands? Now, I think some micro brands get it all wrong. They survey the market and they say, what's the most I can charge for this new product? That's why a lot of them don't get off the ground. I'm gonna show you today the Axios Ironclad, a brand new watch by one of the creators of Zelos. So it's already got a bit of provenance about it. And I think the team at Axios have gone about it the entirely opposite way. They have thought, how much watch can we offer at the price point in question? That's one reason, a big reason that I think this one is bound to succeed rather than to fail. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Axios. They are delighted for me to be able to show you their watch prior to the Kickstarter campaign launching in two weeks time. You can have a good look at this review. As always though, don't just take my word for it. Uh, Bruce Williams, Mark from Average Bros. There's a bunch of other reviews available either on the Axios website or I'm sure they are appearing in your YouTube feed right about now. But believe me when I say you are gonna be impressed with the specs on offer with this one. Swiss made Salita SW200 automatic movement. One of the best loom videos that I can remember seeing in a watch at its price and a three micron thin scratch proof layer on the bracelet, the clasp and the case, ensuring that your ironclad will look as good in a couple of years time as it does when you peel off the stickers. Enough waffle Jody, you're about to fall off your chair. Let's flip the camera and have a look at this one. So all the usual good stuff today then, I'm going to go through dimensions and specifications. A couple of different loom videos because the loom I think is well worth it. I'm going to put this one head to head with a Seiko known for their loom. Indoor, outdoor, high, low wrist shots and we'll get this Salita 200 on the time grapher. But really, I think a great overall package, a really kind of compelling package, especially if you're going to keep a watch long term. If you're looking for something that you can knock around for a number of years, then that scratch proof coating, I think, is an added bonus as well. Double dome sapphire, ceramic bezel insert, etc. etc. Now, these are going to be launching on Kickstarter on the 20th of August. The introductory price, the early bird special, is going to be 399 US dollars. Expected delivery time is February next year. So one of the downsides of Kickstarter is obviously that you're, you're stumping up the money up front, you're pledging for one of these watches today, but you don't take receipt of it for about four to five months. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, one of the three brains behind this Axios is Elshan Tang of Zelos. So you can be pretty well assured that for a start, the project is going to go ahead and that the quality is going to be there. Zelos, definitely one of my favorite micro brands. They made my top five micro brands of 2018 video, a video that I'm going to make towards the end of this year. And I'm sure they will be there or thereabouts again this year. Now, Zelos, I think, offers an awful lot for the money. And I think they definitely continued that theme with this Axios Ironclad. Perhaps not the most original design, I will get onto that later on, but let's talk dimensions and specifications to begin with. So 40 millimeters in diameter, just under 14 millimeters thick, 13.7, including that piece of double dome sapphire. 46, so a nice compact lug tip to lug tip, 46 millimeters. However, it's one of these watches that the bracelet has that protruding mid link of the end link. So that's 51, and yeah, that kind of effectively on the wrist is somewhere in between 46 and 51. 20 millimeter lug width, uh, tapering down to 18, back up to 20 at a really very, very nice clasp. I'm gonna show you the bracelet in just a second. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist. This one weighs in at 170 grams. So that is actually quite a bit of weight. It's got a bit of heft considering it's a 40, not as big as the Helm Komodo, for example, that was pushing 200 at 40 mil, but not nearly as light as my R65. That one's about 135. So if you like your watches relatively small in diameter, but with a bit of bulk to them, this ironclad may suit you just fine. 316L stainless steel case, 
crown, bezel and bracelet. Full solid links, solid end links. I'm going to show you that, as I said, in just a second. Now, we do have a fully loomed ceramic bezel insert, double dome sapphire, as I've said a couple of times. Screw down crown giving this watch 500 meters of water resistance. Again, spec monster, 500, not 300, 200, but you get 500 meters of water resistance. Screw down case back. Again, I'll show you that in just a second as well. The bezel is, as you would expect, 120 click, unidirectional, rotating dive time, and it is rock solid. Submariner style edge here, not super, super grippy. You're gonna have to work it a little bit, but then again, you're not gonna knock it by accident, and very robust. Everything lines up just as it should. Zoomed right on the dial, and you can see a fairly pronounced sunburst effect. I believe all of these watches have that sunburst effect on the dial. So the applied logo, that is the Axios logo there, just automatic and 500 meters, 1640 feet, in case you were wondering, printed above the date frame at six o'clock. Now, nice chamfered edge date window there at six, and it's a color match date wheel, which is always a bit of a bonus. Applied indices, I think the dial is nice and clean. Applied indices, kind of truncated triangles, they actually look like little ramps. Uh, the noses of them are chamfered off as well at the 12, the three and the nine, missing down there at the six because of the date window and circular indices everywhere else. Nice bit of depth to them though, and it also helps with the loom. Now I'll pop the loom video up now. This is Superluminova C3X1 grade. So the top grade of C3 Superluminova. First time I've seen this one. I've seen X1C1 and that was pretty impressive. This X1C3 is fantastic. Super, super bright green initially, and it lasts and it lasts and it lasts. But a bit of a Z-Loss specialty, they seem to have carried it over here as well. Two-tone loom. If you see the minute track on the bezel, fully loomed bezel with fully loomed minute track, and they've used BGW9 there as well. So you do get a nice kind of two-toned loom effect after dark. And as you can see, it just keeps on hanging on. So much so that I thought I'd put it up against the Seiko Turtle, not known as a slouch when it comes to loom at this 400 US dollar price point. Now, Lumi Bright again, very impressive initially, just like the X1C3, but as you can see, as the time progresses, the Axios hangs on in much, much more impressive overall than the Turtle. So pretty good job on the loom. Like I said, can't remember too many watches out looming this one for 400 bucks. Now the handset, kind of sword hands mixed with cathedral hands, if you see what I mean on the hour and the minute. Fairly pronounced second hand as well there, they've color matched this one in red. Kind of goes nicely with the blue and that little red 500 meter water resistance rating above the six. Clearly once you put something in a 40 mil case with crown guards, you're gonna draw comparisons with Rolex Submariners, especially with a three link oyster bracelet. However, I would not call this watch an homage. I think the dial is too different, the hands are too different the ceramic bezel insert far too different as well it's got a bit of character of its own and as suggested the bracelet is a good one nice consistent fine brushing fully brushed bracelet so brushed three-piece oyster link and brushed sides to those links so unlike most submariner style watches which have high polished sides this one is all brushed Screw links, as I mentioned there as well, you'll need to get one of your one mil screwdrivers if you want to size this one up properly. And a great clasp, nice chamfered edges, a whole bunch of micro adjusts, the Axios logo properly engraved in there, little space for your fingernail, double security pushers, and is a proper scissor clasp. Definitely a cut above the norm, this one. Popping a link to show you the screw down case back, nicely, deeply etched with the iron clad that gives this watch its name. One of the iron clad warships that ended the, the age, the 3000 year long reign of the wooden warship. All very nice, all quite simple actually. And beating away behind that nicely engraved case back is a Solita SW200-1 Swiss made automatic movement. It's essentially a 26 joule clone of the ETA 2824, so very similar specifications, roughly 40 hour power reserve. As you can see there, a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour. Now stated tolerances of this one, stated accuracy, minus 15 to plus 30. However, I have had a very good relationship with most of the SW200s I've reviewed so far most of them actually floating around this plus five to plus ten this one coming in pretty much within that range they're pretty solid reliable entry level admittedly but solid and reliable swiss high beat autos you get that nice smooth sweep of the second hand with these as well 
And there is the watch sitting on top of my 7-inch wrist. 40 mil, a real sweet spot for me. This one, though, is quite heavy for a 40. I do tend to wear heavy watches a little bit tighter than I would wear a lighter watch. Uh, the bunch of micro adjust here, though, means that you can do that. Now, as I discussed earlier on, 46 mil lug tip to lug tip, but the protruding mid-length means that it wears a little larger than that dimension would suggest. So just make sure, if you've got a slightly smaller wrist than I do, make sure you're okay with that style of protruding mid-link before you jump on board with this one. And there we are, that's the proper overhead shot. Still nice and legible, as it should be, given that it's a dive watch. Plenty going on, though, given the ceramic bezel insert, the sunburst effect on the centre of the dial, and a few different colours there as well. It does play with the light nicely, in spite of the fact that most of the watch is brushed. And taking the watch outside into some natural light, this is a prototype that I'm reviewing today. Not sure how much anti-reflective coating is on the underside of the sapphire on this one, but Axios claim they're going to put plenty on production units. So it should probably look a little more legible than this. That's it on wrist. It was a bit loose here for me. As I said, it's a fairly chunky watch. Up to you how you wear your watches though. Not much curvature in the lugs or the case to be honest, but it's not a big watch. It should be fine for most. So, a lot to like then. I think it's a fairly handsome big watch. Now, big being the operative word, big for a 40. Very, very well specced. I mean, Solita 200, fully loomed ceramic bezel insert, not to mention that three micron coating. A kind of wafer, wafer thin coating on all the steel surfaces on this watch, meaning that it should wear very, very well indeed long term. A human hair is about 30 microns thick, so it really is imperceptible. Just a little coating on here, but should ensure that the stainless steel finish lasts very well. A kind of equivalent to the Seiko Dia Shield system that they use on some of their more expensive divers. So a lot to like in terms of specs then. What am I not so keen on? Well, it is a big 40 mil. That's something that you're going to have to decide how you enjoy wearing your watches. That protruding mid-link and 170 grams, not inconsiderable. So don't be thinking that because it's a 40, it's going to be light and easy to wear. It is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier on wrist. And it's not the most original design in the world, is it? There is a bit of a micro brand by numbers feel to it. I mean, the name Axios, you can see them around the table saying, what about a Greek or Roman name? They're always popular. Omega, no, that's been done. Phoebus, no, somebody got that one recently. Axios, that's perfect, perfect. Uh, what about a, a name for the watch itself? Uh, something nautical, maritime, military, ironclad, great. We can put it on the case pack because somebody already did a mermaid riding a dolphin but you can hardly blame them for playing it a bit safe. This is their first model after all. And I'm sure if Zelos is anything to go by, they'll want to get a few sales on the board, a bit of momentum behind the company, and I'm sure that Axios will branch out into more exciting and interesting models as the time progresses. And I don't think I got the most exciting colorway sent to me either. I mean, blue on blue is a little bit dull. If you check the website, they're offering five. There's a Batman, there's a Hulk one, which I think looks great. My personal favorite though would be the Tudor Heritage style gilt with that little red triangle, perhaps a little bit more of an homage in terms of the color scheme, but I think it would really suit the watch. But a lot to like about this one, some really nice little touches, a well thought out design overall, and an absolute spec monster for 399 US dollars. So there you have it, the Axios Ironclad. Perhaps not the most original design in the world, perhaps not the most original branding in the world either, but for a debut attempt, I think this one is a very, very strong first effort. I've no doubt it will do well on Kickstarter and we'll see more original products from Axios as the time goes on. I think I've got the most boring colorway. I wouldn't necessarily be opting for the blue. I think the gilt and black one looks fantastic. The Hulk one, the all green one, or perhaps one of those two tones ones with the orange hand would be the one to go for. Do bear in mind that it does wear a little larger than your average 40, thanks to those extended mid lengths, but that's a good thing in some ways. It's a relatively small watch that's got a bit of heft about it. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.